Hey, this is Pastor Chris. Welcome to worship. I am praying that God speaks to you today in a way that helps you overcome the struggles that you face. You're listening to this because other people are giving to Grace Atamwa. If you have never given to Grace, but you want others to experience hope, you can do so today at graceatamwa.org slash give. And I hope to see you this week in our Facebook group where we dive in deeper together. If you haven't joined in yet, go to Facebook and search for Grace Atamwa Church Online. Now, prepare your heart for today's message. God wants to speak to you. Life gets so hurried. We're running from activity to activity. And they find it's true whether you're a parent or a grandparent or you're single and without kids. No matter what your stage in life is, as I talk to people, we're hurried. We're busy. And there's not enough time for everything that's important to us. And in the midst of our hurry and our flurry of activity and our exhaustion, we miss the divine moments. The moments where we realize that God is there in that moment with us. And today as we look at this passage from John chapter 21, it's the last chapter of the Gospel of John, the story of Jesus. We see the disciples, the disciples, the followers of Jesus who'd been with Jesus every day, 24-7, for three years. And just in the previous weeks, they saw Jesus die on the cross, executed, and rise again from the dead. And they saw him appear to them twice before. And yet it's not the same, because he's not with them 24-7 in that physical, tangible way that they were used to. Instead, he's with them a lot more like he's with us where we get glimpses and moments where we see God with us. Let's read this story from John chapter 21. The gospel begins, Later Jesus himself appeared again to his disciples in the Sea of Tiberias. This is how it happened. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two other disciples were together. Simon Peter told them, I'm going fishing. And they said, we'll go with you. They set out in a boat, but throughout the night, they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize it was Jesus. Jesus called to them, children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. He said, Cast your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they did. And there were so many fish that they couldn't haul in the net. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he wrapped his cloak around himself, for he was naked, and he jumped into the water. And the other disciples followed in the boat, dragging a net full of fish, for they weren't far from shore, only about a hundred yards. And when they landed, they saw a fire there with fish on it and some bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you've just caught. Simon Peter got up and pulled the net to shore. It was full of large fish, 153 of them. Yet the net hadn't torn, not even with so many fish. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples could bring themselves to ask him, who are you? They knew. It was the Lord. Jesus came and took bread and gave it to them, and he did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So this is the story. Jesus appears to the disciples. He shows up to them. By the Sea of Tiberias is how it's called here. It's also the same name for the Sea of Galilee. 
And here's how it happened. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, Zebedee's sons, that's James and John, and two other disciples, they're together. And they're gathered. And keep in mind, this is just in the days and weeks following Jesus' execution. And they've got some fear. And they're holed up in their own place. And I wonder, were they stir crazy? I don't know. But one time, Simon Peter just says to them, I'm going fishing. And I, in my own mind, I think he's just got to feel like he's got to do something. And he might even say, that's it. I'm going fishing. And they don't know what else to do, so they go with him. And fishing, it's an ordinary thing. It's what many of them did before they became followers of Jesus. And yet, when they went fishing this night, it's not so ordinary. You know, if you're playing a game of golf, an ordinary game of golf is a game that you get your ordinary score that you get. And if you play golf, you know what that is. A bad game of golf is when you get a really bad score. When you keep hitting the ground with your club. That's how I usually play. Or an ordinary game of bowling is when you get the score you ordinarily get. But a bad game of bowling is when, <laughs> is when it looks like you're trying to get the lowest score. An ordinary day at the office is when nothing out of the ordinary happens, but when everything goes wrong, when you end the day and it just goes terribly, when you make bad decisions and it falls back on you, when you let your team down. And so in this ordinary day that they were going fishing, they caught nothing. It's kind of like those failure moments, those ordinary failure moments where you're having an argument with the person you say you're going to love and cherish and honor and care about. Or you have those moments as a parent and you say the words that you never wanted to come out of your mouth. When everything's falling apart, when you get the little ones in the car and you finally buckle them down and everyone's had it with each other before you're going to go out on the fun family day. In the midst of the ordinary and even on your worst of days. That's what we're seeing here. And what we're seeing is that Jesus was there. The story goes on that early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. They'd been fishing all night long. They caught nothing. Jesus stands on the shore, but the disciples don't realize that it's Jesus. And in those moments that your families had it with each other, in those moments that nothing's going right, do you know that Jesus is there on those ordinary, messed up days? Do you know it? Do you recognize it? Or are you like me? You're just too hurried and rushed and flustered to see. The church that I grew up in as a young kid, it, it was had a very, very traditional looking sanctuary. The colors were dark. And I remember feeling, I don't know, someone must have told me at some point. But I knew deep in my being that when I walked into that room, our tone of voice needed to change. We spoke to each other in hushed tones and whispers. We didn't talk about ordinary things of what we were going to be doing later that day. Our feet had a different way that they walked in this space. And at certain times in the service, we were supposed to go up to the front, but only up to a point because there was this, this, this altar rail, this bar, this place that you shall not cross. And why? The, the message that was given to me, or somehow I got in my mind, was that God lived up there. Behind that altar rail, there was this special holy place where God lived, where God did God things. And even getting into the room where God's space was in 
we just had to be careful and quiet and hushed so that we didn't offend God. But then when we left, we could be ourselves again. It sent me some messed up ideas about who God is. But then, when I was in college, I started attending a different church. And that church's sanctuary was set very different. There were basketball lines on the floor. It was set up as a gymnasium. And as I walked into that space, I had a different sense of who God is. That God is not separate from the ordinary parts of our lives, but God is very involved. What's your ordinary place? Where do you go? If you look back over this past week, where have you been? Where have you been? Have you been to a coffee shop, a donut shop, an ice cream shop? Have you been to the amusement park, the zoo? Have you been in line dropping kids off or picking them up at school? Have you been running from place to place? Have you been at work? Have you been at your favorite restaurant or bar? Where have you been? And who was there? Whose faces come to mind as you think of the people in those places? Do you know their name? Do you know the name of the barista that serves you? And how do you feel when you think of those people? And what were you doing in those places? And did you realize that Jesus was there? Because the disciples didn't realize. The disciples were out fishing, and they did not realize Jesus was there. He was right there on the shore, and they didn't see him. He's standing there. How did they not know? They'd been with Jesus 24-7 for three years. They got to see Jesus face to face. But we often don't. How did they not know? And how do we? How do we miss Jesus in the everyday? How do we get so hurried and anxious and caught up and stressed? We worry about so many things. And we miss Jesus. I wonder what the disciples were thinking. If I don't get this figured out, if we don't catch fish, we're not eating tomorrow. And they missed it. But Jesus reaches out to them, even as they're missing him. He calls out to them, children, have you caught anything to eat? He calls them children. Shouldn't that title have given Jesus away? This title, children, it, it, it's like a fatherly title. It's like, you know when you have someone who might not be your literal dad, but they come to you and they see you and they care for you. And they say, son, you haven't caught anything today, have you? Daughter, this isn't going very well, is it? It's this expression of caring and nurturing. It's paternal. But they didn't pick up on it. They just see this stranger calling to them from shore. Children, have you caught anything? And in the Greek, this question is actually written more like a statement. You haven't caught anything, have you? You haven't caught anything, have you? And it's not about catching anything. It's have you caught anything to eat? This is such an interruption and almost even a little offensive. And that sometimes is how Jesus comes to us in the everyday. Thanks for pouring it out, stranger on the shore. Thanks for the interruption. But did you know that Jesus is often in that obnoxious interruption if we slow down enough to recognize him? Jesus doesn't end it there. They holler back, nope, we didn't catch anything. And he says, Cast your net on the other side of the boat. Then you'll find some. They're out there fishing. They've been trying all night long. And he has the audacity to tell them what to do. But they do it. And when they did it, there were so many fish. Remember, they hadn't caught a thing. There were so many fish that they couldn't even haul in the net. 
when we recognize Jesus in the everyday. In the everyday, mundane, frustrating, not going the way we had planned elements of life. When we recognize Jesus, when we listen to those divine nudges, we receive a gift. Jesus revealed this gift to them. So many fish they couldn't even handle it all. And the gift itself wasn't just pointing to itself, it was pointing to Jesus. Because when they saw this net full of fish, one of the disciples, the one who Jesus loved like a brother, said to Peter, It's the Lord. And when Simon Peter heard who it was, he jumps up. He wraps his cloak around himself. He only has undergarments on. He was swaying out there fishing in the night. He wrapped his cloak, he ties it around his waist, and he jumps into the water. He swims to shore. Because what do you do when you actually recognize that it's not just you in this moment? It's not just you alone dealing with this frustrating junk of life. What do you do when you really see that Jesus is there with you in it? And Jesus is going to make it work out. And it's okay. What do you do? You jump in the water and you swim to shore because nothing else matters. Peter jumped into the water. He swims for sure. The other disciples, they collect the gift. They're hauling him and they say, oh, I think Jesus will probably still be there when we get there. So they haul in the gift. They bring it in. They receive this gift Jesus had. And they follow behind Peter in the boat. They drag the net full of fish. They weren't that far from shore, about 100 yards. And have you ever noticed Jesus has a sense of humor? Peter gets up there and the disciples get there with their boat full of fish. And when they do, they see this fire there and there's already fish on it. There's already bread there. Jesus provided for them out in the water, but he already had a provision right there on the shore. He already has the fish. He doesn't need it. And yet he still says, bring the fish that you caught. And there's some irony there because did they catch it or did Jesus throw those fish into their net? Sometimes when things go right, it's hard to tell which it is. But it's a sign, isn't it? That Jesus is there with us. He tells them, bring what you have. So Simon Peter, he gets up, he pulls that net to the shore. It's full of large fish, 153 fish, big fish. I'd get excited if I caught one fish. I'd still hold it closer to the camera to make it clear how big it really was. And the net didn't even tear. When we realize that Jesus is there with us, and we have all these things we're anxious about and worried about, when we realize that Jesus is there with us, we discover that Jesus is giving us more than we need, more than we possibly could do on our own and he says to his disciples come and have breakfast because that was Jesus's aim all along breakfast sit down and eat with me it wasn't about the fishing it wasn't about the fish it wasn't about the miracle it was about Jesus saying to you and to me and to the disciples there that day I want to have breakfast with you I want this time with you. I know you're hurried. I know you're anxious. I know you have so many things on your mind. Would you slow down and sit down and be with me? I'd like to invite you to just visualize an ordinary event from this past week. An ordinary thing that happened. Can you see Jesus there? Think about a place that you went to. Can you see that Jesus was in it with you? Because the truth is, no matter what we have going on, Jesus wants to meet us in the ordinary places.